Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Crypto Wednesdays, episode 31. Our long hiatus is officially over and we're back in action. We're being consistent, which was always the challenge before when moving around the world and dealing with the domestic drama and crypto attorney and changing regulation. But now, now we're being consistent, which is good. So Anastasia, I welcome again as co-hostess. Um, it's better to do this as a team and I, I like how things get done. We, we have a really interesting panel today. We, we're taking the show in new directions. Of course, keeping with the philosophy of technology, excellence, and human progress. But we'd be remiss in not touching on these new areas. So I'm excited to announce our show, which is how Web3 is revolutionizing the film and creator economies. Now, I just want to point out that when I initially made the title of this, it was Economy, because in my mind, I had merged creator and film. But I don't know if it's the same economy. Maybe it's economies. So I decided to to make that a point of discussion. I, and I think we have the right audience for that. Um, we're gonna, just a, re a reminder to people watching and to the panelists, the show is divided into two components or stages. I find that that works very well. We're gonna have maybe the first half an hour, 45 minutes or so will be a panel discussion um, where Asasia and I interrogate, brutalize and get pushed back by our guests or they can interrogate and talk to each other as well. And the second half of the show, of course, is where we open the show up. It is a webinar. We can open it up to the webinar participants and you can join in, um, go to audio. And if I know you kind of, I can put you to video. We, we did have a nice little Zoom bombing incident that I think forever starred me uh, two or three times ago. And I, I saw stuff I just don't want to unsee. So I'm a little cautious and conservative with promoting to video. If you want to say strange things on audio, I'll, I'll just mute you. So we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. So. Let's, let's get to our, our guests. We're gonna go around. You guys are gonna give the five second introduction of yourselves one by one as I say your first name and then we're gonna kind of go deep on each of you. So, you know, first name rank serial number. In, in other words, maybe your name, what you're working on and where you're located. And then I'll go around to each one of you and I'll get your sort of superhero origin story like the Wolverine. And then we'll kind of go into the main topic which again is how Web3 and this new technology is revolutionizing the film and creator economies. So, Torsten, I'll, I'll, I'll start with you. Name, rank, serial number, or your interpretation of that. Uh, my name is Torsten. Uh, you can find me on torstenhq.com on all platforms. I'm a filmmaker um, based out of uh, the UK, previously Australia, previously Germany, and I look forward to this. That was sufficient. I like it. Mihai, and take yourself off mute. Wow. Hey everyone, I'm Mihai Krasnanu uh, at Mihai C, M I H A I C on Twitter, Telegram, LinkedIn, and pretty much everywhere else. Co founder and CEO of Beam XYZ, B E E M dot XYZ, based in London, traveling in Dubai right now, and uh, looking forward to that incredible conversation. And you're actually my neighbor right now because I'm in Dubai and you flew in. And we you're here are for neighbors. It's fun. We should be doing that together. Yes, we should. Yeah, well, I get to see you tonight at the Crypto Hunters event. So shout out. To yes, I'll Hunters. be there. The fantastic. Looking forward Miguel, to that. Tell us, you. You're the, you know, I'm, I'm, you, you, look, you look so Che Guevara creative. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to have you on the show. You're, you're bringing this whole alternative vibe to my All right. conservative self. So go ahead. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Miguel Faust. Um, you can find me with that name on any platforms, uh, social media. And I'm a filmmaker based in Barcelona. No, sorry, from Barcelona, but based in London. And yeah, I'm excited for, for this chat. Thank you. Filmmaker. Anastasia. Or Anastasia. I always, you know, I, I'm going through the different versions, but I know you well, of course. Uh, let's take let's hear a little bit of your about your background, my wonderful co-host. Yeah, so hello everyone. A uh, special appreciation always goes to people who make a point to pronounce my name correctly. Uh, so here I'm representing the Web3 side, more so than the film side. I mean, I, I love watching movies, obviously. Um, so it's it's an honor to have such uh, awesome guests today. And I've been in crypto for seven years. I'm currently working on growth at Yellow Capital. And um, let's go. I, I I like it. Okay, now we're going to do sort of the kind of the, like I say, every superhero, every comic hero, they have their first movie, but then after the movie, if that does well, they have their origin tale movie. You know, how did Wolverine get his Adamite claws? Okay, what, what, what happened? You know, where, how does Superman grow up? All that stuff. So, Thorson, give us, 
Give us the story of you. Give us some context. Yeah, that's actually exactly what happened to me. So uh, in 2013, I found out about Bitcoin. I'm like, man, I have to make a documentary about this um, low budget amateur kind of um, um, film, which is called Bitcoin, the end of money as we know it. Um, we released it, made it in 2014, released it 2015, went viral on the internet, um, was a small film. And two, three, four years later, I made Cryptopia, which um, many of you might have seen. Um, that one went on, well, Netflix, um, Amazon, mm -hmm. um, many, many broadcasters. Somebody just sent me a screenshot of their um, airline. You know, they have it on their in-flight in, oh, wow. entertainment. Um, so that one went very well. Or Cryptopia blockchain, sorry, Cryptopia, Bitcoin, blockchains, and the future of the internet. Um, mm -hmm. And my third effort now is called Fortitude. It's a space documentary, space economy documentary, uh, which we'll talk about. Amazing topic. Uh, I, I, we, we, will, we will, well, you, you, you can go deeper now if you want to give us the, is there, how did you get into film? How did you even learn about it? And of course, you're yeah, doing crowdfunding, um, which we'll get into. Yes. Yeah, Sorry to interrupt you there. Um, so uh, exactly. So in the beginning, I was crowdfunding my um, my films or um, tapped into some um, like regular funding sources like Screen Australia as a film commission, um, like a pre-sale to a broadcaster in Germany in this case, um, or like a co-production partner uh, in the United States for this current film. So I'm 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 pretty um, um, in in tune with the industry that that way. I used to be a distributor and sales agent before, and mm -hmm. with Forty Two, so my current film, um, I also tried um, a Kickstarter um, to kind of finish the film so we're kind of like 80 90 percent done um but that mm -hmm. one hasn't really done so well um so now i'm kind of um uh, changing uh, strategy a little bit um, and the cool thing about the space economy is um everybody wants to be involved it, it's it's a, a sexy topic so to speak and what we can do for supporters or for producers right we can actually um make you part of a moon mission so uh, we have like this little um capsule like a three gram little capsule where dna goes in uh, so you mm -hmm. can uh, like swap your dna and you can become basically uh, a part of of humanity <laughs> going to the stars uh, go on the moon lander next next year um or even I, I just had an evil thought which is the alien race finds our dna and makes them new bunch of slaves exactly. for civilization. E exactly. And, and you know, we already have this technology here on Earth, right, to resurrect species. Uh, I mean, they're working on this. So we think about mm -hmm. in 100 or 1,000 years so that that metal is, is protected uh, for, for tens of thousands of years. So like spreading humanity to the stars and you can, can be part of it or producers can be part of it. That's kind of like a cool little reward. I'm, I'm trying to pitch that to um, uh, yeah, influential players and producers, people who like to get their name on a poster on the film, but also on mm -hmm. the moon in this case. Interesting. Okay. And we're part of what we're going to talk about is the changing economics of film and other creation and how, you know, I, yes, I, I do remember the whole Kickstarter Indiegogo period and, and you've, you've been kind of blunt and honest and forthcoming, which I think is very useful about how that model has been evolving over your film career. And maybe I think Miguel will have a lot to say about this, you know, the, maybe there's the web three version of Kickstarter now that we all have to sort of catch up with. And actually, I'm gonna go slightly out of order now just because it naturally or organically came up. But Miguel, let's dive a little bit deeper on you and your journey, origin tale, and what you're working on now. Yeah, sure. Um, so as I said, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a screenwriter, director, producer. Um, I started making films in my teenage years uh, after falling in love with cinema from some Tarantino movies, actually. That okay, actually no, I, I, sorry, sorry, pause. I, I, was, I will interrupt nonstop during the show so just give you a What Tarantino films? The first one was Pulp Fiction. Uh, actually, I watched it when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, was, I became obsessed with it and, and started diving a lot deeper into Tarantino and into film in general and making my own short films. And, and learning by doing mm -hmm. and then um, recent years i made a few short films that did well in the festival circuit uh, one of them was called Tayadita, and it was also acquired by hbo for for streaming mm -hmm. and um and then i wanted to turn Tayadita into my first feature film um and found it very hard to to take to get the project off the ground with traditional funding methods so in the end, we decided to crowdfund it using an NFT collection, mm -hmm. and it, and it was very successful. It has become the first film in Europe to be ever funded by NFTs after successfully raising over eight hundred fifty thousand dollars from an NFT collection. 
and we shot the film in September and are currently finishing post production and hoping to release it soon. I mean that that that's actually sort of crazy. I mean, you you raised eight hundred thousand dollars. I presume there's no celebrity that was appearing on NFTs, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it was no. it was really fan support of this idea, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's and people people struggle with. I, I just I just gave a presentation on this uh, in person live presentation about one of the future uses for NFTs, and and uh, and I were on the last show. I'm Cecilia and I were on the last show talking about using NFTs for community building, not mm -hmm. just themselves representing art, but as a means of organizing groups to accomplish something. And here you are, which I didn't mm -hmm. even, even know happened before. Actually, it's kind of interesting. You, you actually made a full length feature film funded with NFT sales. Am I hearing this correct. correctly? Wow. Yes. Okay, we'll, exactly. we'll dive into that. And then we're going to see how Torsten can maybe adopt this model or you guys can, we'll, we'll, we'll see what's next. But Mihai, my friend. My story uh, that has to do with, with everything, really. Born in Romania, immigrated in France when I was uh, 13, learned to code long time ago, 84, when I was 13, basic and assembler, uh, and kind of defined uh, what I'm doing today because I went on the technology path um, and I started my first startup in 96, 97 in Latin America from France, I went there was the first webmail, uh, sold it, then uh, discovered Netflix in 2000 in the US. Netflix was one year old and uh, I was blown away. Uh, it wasn't streaming yet, it was online DVD rentals. So I went to France to create, let's say the French Netflix. And that's what I did, build the and, Netflix. You know, I mean, yeah, the <laughs> Le Netflix. Le, 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 thank you. <laughs> was, le Netflix. Okay. Gloria and and uh, yeah, we became number one in France in online DVD rentals. We bought a couple of companies in Germany. Then we launched streaming, which was really a kind of a premiere in in, in Europe. We were the first company to sign Warner Brothers for digital rights uh, out of the US. Uh, and and actually, we launched streaming like three years before Netflix did. Uh, and that's a company I sold in two thousand eight. And then I kept going. So tech and media, that's my thing. And I kept going in in media. Uh, by setting up another company that does licensing. So basically buying rights for film, TV, and, and documentaries from major studios and, uh, and hundreds of other distributors mm -hmm. and packaging that for streaming platforms all around the world. Telecom, cable operators, you know, uh, OTT platforms uh, between Asia, Middle East, uh, Latin America. So that's why I had offices in Dubai, offices in Kuala Lumpur, in London, in LA, we have offices in Buenos Aires, in, 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 in Barcelona, and that company is still up and running. So it's licensing, it's content packaging, mm -hmm. but also it's tech and also it's marketing. So dealing with the marketing of all those films and TV shows. Um, so that really, you know, that exposure for 20 years to the tech of streaming and to the licensing of the content from production to distribution and, and the end users mm -hmm. gave me the background, literally, to connect with my parallel life, <laughs> which is my crypto life. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2013, uh, I started to mine Bitcoin because I'm not a trader, really, mm -hmm. but I love tech and I love the concept of freedom. Uh, my Romanian background probably has to do a lot with that. Uh, and, and you know, started in, in Bitcoin. And what... I'm sorry, me, what, what, what year did you leave Romania? 84. Okay, so while, when Ceseska was still in power. It, he was still Very in power. In power. Uh, yeah, okay, interesting. Very much. That was probably the worst couple of years, the last yeah. ones, yeah. So I know what, you know, oppression, lack of freedom and everything means. Uh, so really for me, Bitcoin was, fuck, that, that's quite incredible. And, um, you know, what, what for me it, me, it meant, uh, it's the ethos of it. It's, you know, uh, trustless because as soon as you trust, you might not necessarily end up in a good position, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Permissionless, uh, immu immutability, uh, composability, uh, which is, you know, which is, let's say, enabled by real decentralization. So for me, that that was like a, a completely shift of everything. And obviously, mm -hmm. when Ethereum came up after that, 
and being able not only to, to store things, but also to run things, that was for me the, the, the let's say the, the, the connection between those two lives, you know, the crypto life and the media life and tech, mm. where literally you realize that you can do a lot of things that you, you weren't able to do before uh, by literally uh, having digital scarcity, ownership that's digital, how the hell that can happen. Um, and connecting, connecting literally the, the the two ends of marketplaces without without uh, gatekeepers in the middle, you know, producers, creators, and audiences and end users, uh, and having that automated and trustless. So that that that's that's a mind blowing concept. So, mm -hmm. 2017, I started thinking about a decentralized platform for media. 2018, I, well, I met my co-founder, Cyprien, and uh, 2018, we published a white paper, 50 pages white paper about that. Uh, and then 2019, that, you know, that became Beam. And uh, 2019, we started coding and developing Beam. 2020, we launched the Alpha, literally in the middle of the pandemic. So it was a really what you can call an MVP. I mean, it, it was running. We did a bunch of screening and stuff, but it was basic, basic. 2021, we launched a more, more of a closed beta that you, it was more by invitation only, and mm -hmm. now we, we're open. So I would say that <clears throat> everything grew up in me that's, that's, you know, the tech, the media, the injustice of, you know, being on either side of the spectrum and having gatekeepers in the middle that try to screw you up, no matter if it's in finance, if it's in content, if it's in rights, you know, that that's, th these are, these are, uh, entities that are not necessarily evil by by nature because people are not necessarily evil by nature but they become evil because they just can right so <clears throat> for me that's fascinating in in web3 and that brings us really to to the topic today which is filmmakers uh most of them are independent and mm -hmm. most of them literally depend on, on, you know, someone saying you're worth my attention. Someone saying your story is worth existing. So someone has to grant you permission to exist, to tell your story, to get a check to make it happen. And, and hopefully, you know, try to push you to an audience that they own. So in a way, storytellers and filmmakers who are supposed to be at the center, they are the superstars here, right? They become just, you know, chain workers, right? You know, uh, uh, you know, at, at the mercy of big corporations that decide who's going to win, how, what are the. And by the way, in the middle, they may might stay with your rights, with your IP. Um, the movie might not even be yours to do, you know. Uh, so, so I think I think that's that's the moment when revolution starts, and that's a quiet, silent revolution because it's more of an evolution. But you know, people like like Miguel and many others in the space and Dorsten, and mm. you know, we created something that's called Film Three, uh, and we were part of that. You know, Miguel, myself, and other people like you know Jordan Bain and and others who said, okay, well, we need a term for that. You know, how can we call film? And, and content that's being produced in Web3 with that ethos, right? Community-centric, creator-driven. Well, mm -hmm. let's call it film. And literally a year ago, a bit more, we, we did that. And we went to Cannes Film Festival, which is starting next week, by saying, hey, yeah. this is film three. And, and that's that's growing. That's growing on everyone. So that's that's the new model where we're going for. And Beam, Beam it's, it's the platform who can support that, among many other creators, of course. Of course we'll one, one that. okay, that, so that's me, Mihai, give, give me the, I didn't quite catch, what exactly is Beam's fundamental business proposition? Three sentences or less. It's super simple. It's uh, allowing any creator, uh, it could be a filmmaker, it could be a YouTuber, it could be a TikToker, it could be a musician, it could be a community like even yours, Gordon, right? Even mine. To become your own platform. So let's make it clear. What does it even mean? Uh, it means that today you're never the platform. Today you're just a slave of a platform. If the platform is Netflix or Disney+, Plus, or if the platform is... Uh, YouTube or TikTok, you feed the platform. And and because it's a destination where people go to find you. 
Mm. What we're saying is that decentralization allow you, Miguel, and you, Torsten, and you, Gordon, to be the platform. So people go to Miguel, to Gordon, to Torsten, mm. and that's where you build your own home with the tools that we provide you, which means storage, distribution, monetization. Life okay, you're, you're way over three sentences. I, I got it. We'll, we'll come back to you. And by the way, it's funny. I normally don't check. I get excited, Gordon. But oh, I get excited I you? talking to you too. It's fine. I, I don't think you're excited because you're talking to me, but it's okay. By the way, it, it's funny. That I normally don't I, check I, I, chats during the show, but I got people chatting me now saying, good show. We want to form our own panel. So I, I like the fractal vision nature of what we're doing here. This, this happens a lot. Okay, Thorson, you, you were eagerly jumping in there, and I think I think you got triggered by the IP concept, but maybe maybe you want to run with this. Okay. Okay, can I um, jump back at what Mihai said about the, the problems with um, uh, the, the Web2 world? Because, I mean, yeah. we, we know that YouTube is kind of monetizing us and our attention and all these platforms. Let, let's not even start there. But I think uh, two aspects here are really important that I've I noticed. So uh, crypto people are very sensitive. And I, I've been you know covering the crypto space for almost um, eight, nine years now. The the, the the censorship issue, right? Like, like mm -hmm. centralized platforms can censor you, shut you off. If you have a crypto show, you don't even know what you what you did. Suddenly, you're off of uh, YouTube. You worked for five years to build that audience. That happens mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so that's number one. And the other thing, uh, Mihai, that uh, that um, I didn't mention, um, but I, as a filmmaker, experienced that quite a lot. Where when I talk to the traditional um, broadcasters, media company they are kind of influencing and shaping the story. So do I really want to make what Netflix think a space documentary should be or what, you know, the German broadcaster wants Bitcoin to be? Oh, let's do something about Satoshi. Let's do about... No, I want to make the film that I want to make. But I can't because, you know, the money comes from uh, people who want to have a say in it. And and like in, in a space documentary that I'm currently doing, you know, people push me, do something on Elon. What are the good guys and bad guys? You know, the, the, the typical questions, right? But I'm like, no, I'm sophisticated. I want to show what, what's going on in, in, in this entire I, um, industry. I, I want to do it my way, and um, it, yeah, that's that's been tough. That's been tough. So l l l let me let me give you a thought, or it's a slight pushback, but maybe not. I am not. I'm I'm just dipping my toe into content creation, obviously. Okay, and but in in my mind, in my mind, non-trivial film production is a complex thing. It requires a lot of planning, a lot of equipment, a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of different skill sets coming together it requires capital and someone has the choice about whether they want to go into content creation funding or not and then what to fund and that's limited i i can i can i mean they i don't know it's always like some oppressive censorship thing they may be a have their own they may be creative people with money who want to participate somehow and they also may want to be getting a good return on their investment now to me high's point they, they they're there is always that thing where their intentions don't start as evil, but they may eventually become evil or they, they kind of slide into it. I, I, I'm not quite so negative. But you, give me my point of view and then you guys can push back. I'm not quite so negative on the stakeholders, whether the financial or other, or famous actors that agree to do a show if you cast their boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm not so against that because everything, you know, if you want to go something, go make something in your basement with your own equipment and put it on your YouTube channel, have five views, great, go do it. But you're asking other people to support you and people have limited time and resources. So why shouldn't they have something to say? Now, I think before you jump in on that, I think what gay, I think it's more like a mechanical mathematical thing that gives these people leverage. It's the it's a prior complexity of producing creative work. But as that technology becomes democratized and the tools become open source and cheaper, it's, it's, it's that the requirements for that monolith, that cathedral approach is falling and therefore the power is shifting. But I, I think that's almost like a math function or a chemical reaction as opposed to, you know, evil conniving guys, you know, going like this. But I'm not on the ground. So I I'd like to know what you think. I'll, I'll do a quick one. And I'm, I'm very curious to hear Miguel's and Mihai's uh, point on this as well. So I think you're 100% right in the description. Um, the, the difference is, are you an employee or a freelancer on behalf of the BBC or Netflix, right? And then you you um, um, 
execute their orders, right? Their, their, their project, or do you want to be an entrepreneur, right? And the creator economy, sorry, this is what this is all about. We are all creators. This is the new world, whether you are on, on Twitter or whether you're on Beam or whether you are a YouTube Crypto Wednesday um, um, a creator, you want to make your own decision. And I think that's what we're talking about. And, and I personally don't like um, some broadcaster telling me what to, to do. So, so you are right. I could choose that way, but I think the, the world is moving that way. So that's, that's my take on it. Yeah, I like the um, I like the parallel with with um, with an entrepreneur or, or a you know a company founder uh, who has a clear vision of what they want to do and and people with money want to support that vision. If if they want to come and change your whole business, probably they're not the right fit as an investor because because they're not there to to support the vision or they don't believe in the vision and they they can just put their money somewhere else. I think. And also, but, but also even beyond creative control and censorship and all of that, mm -hmm. the parallel with entrepreneurship um, becomes especially, you know, um, horrible for filmmakers when you look at ownership and and um, reward, economic reward for, mm -hmm. for filmmakers. Basically, think this is the way that most films are funded at least outside europe because in europe there is more there's a lot of public money but in the us where mm. where most films are funded privately um they are funded similarly to startups but with crazy bad terms for the founders so this is the way it works you you have a script that you might have been working on for years you have an idea you're a filmmaker you want to make that movie People with money come in as private equity investors, similar to with a startup, but then they give you all the money to make the movie, but keep 100% of the ownership. They might give you some minor points in the back end, just so that you feel like you're not just being hired to make to make a job, but that's essentially what's happening. They hire, they, they, then they, they, you agree on a salary and you get paid for the script and for directing the movie, but you have zero yeah. ownership. The movie then comes to be a huge success, you see nothing of that. They want to make a remake afterwards. They want to make a second film. They can kick you out instantly. You have zero ownership of, over the IP and over the company that is the film. But uh, uh, so let me let me Hollywood accounting. Well, I was like, I I think I, I'm personally where just coming from LA, the difference between above the line, line accounting and below the line, you know. And yes, if, if they give you your points after all the expenses associated with the film have finally been paid, you'll never see a dime because they're going to do catering from. 20 years later and, and stick it on there and you'll then you have to exactly. audit them and they never give you the result but i mean i, I guess i'm gonna hit the point again like if you're i think this happened to george lucas i think i think he gave some anecdote or maybe it's francis i love movies by the way i lo love 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 um they've made my life but if i I, th I think what you're talking about is a function of your market power or lack thereof because if i'm the money guy and I'm talking, I'm talking to each one of you before you've done anything commercially successful. And you're not the only one I'm talking to that day. I'm talking to 20 other filmmakers that day. And I'm talking to 20 other filmmakers every day. And I have to decide to fund five projects a year. Why, why am I not going to do that? I kind of need to because the vast majority of these films aren't going to work. I, I, I think... I think I think I think it feels personal because you're having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with them, but really if you take a big step back, it's just that there's so much filmmaker talent chasing such a limited amount of money that therefore yeah. the powers in this other side. I, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, it's supply and demand, obviously. But, oh, oh, almost done. So I, I I think I think the I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I, but I think I liked the idea, if I'm hearing it correctly, that web three and fusion and things can change the structural math, which filters down to the individual relationships and negotiations. Because now you have more choices. Now you're democratizing the chance to fund you. Yeah, exactly. And, okay. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's supply ahead. and demand. What you're talking about is just that there's enough people wanting to make films so that the money guys have the upper hand. Yeah. But then like in, in the case of your movies, you were funded through, like that last movie you made was funded through NFT sales. And so the people who bought the NFTs might not have been this like traditional money guys that would fund the movies. These were just potential viewers, right? And so you're basically mm -hmm. switching the one money guy who takes all your rights, and instead you're getting money from all these potential viewers. So 
that's it's it's basically like more decentralized model but i actually wanted to take like a step back to what uh, mihai was talking about about uh, how beam makes makes it possible for creators to like own their own video uh, content platform and so I have like also a marketer perspective on this because I've been doing like growth and marketing for quite quite some time, and like the main like you you must might have been talking about you know Netflix or YouTube as this like evil corporation platforms which only like take your content and make money off of it and give you like nothing. But the main reason people go there is because they have the audience. And so like if a creator like Gordon, if he had to create his own video platform, right? So how he would be missing out on the chance to put his content in front of um, like other people on YouTube, for example. And so how would I, how would, how would a creator like, work with this platform and where would he be getting the the audience from if if, if there's not like a bigger platform behind it you're 100 right um there's no one on this planet that's that's going to give you the audience that the youtube or tiktok gives you uh, unless it's a there's a state power who invests uh, hundreds of billions <laughs> in building a new platform but besides that there's no other way so but let me, let's make it clear, anyone who pretends to give you an audience, mm -hmm. it's cheating you because nobody can give you that except those big platforms. What's wrong about those big platforms is not that they give you the audience, is that the relationship of power, it's totally in their favor, right? You depend on them. Uh, you, you basically, your livelihood depend on a glitch or not in the algorithm or the policies that will shut you down or censor you or, you know, take 70% of whatever you make or even 100%, right? The thing here, it's obviously that we need to invert the relationship of power. And that's what we're doing. Basically, uh, imagine Patreon. Patreon is not trying to generate audience for you. Patreon is trying to monetize an audience that you have already uh, with a different mean. So imagine Patreon, but on mega super steroids, right? With an entire video platform, and that's Beam and white label, by the way, and decentralized, by the way. So not, not even us, we can kick you out. So <clears throat> yes, you need an audience. Yes, be on YouTube, be everywhere you can. Grab your audience, but you have to drive your audience home. And where is home? Your platform, where you own your data, your, your content, your IP, your users. And you do everything from your home and blast it back on those social media platforms to drive again more audience back to you. So in a way, you're sucking away audience from a place that you don't even know who the audience is to a place that you can call home, where you convert the audience in a community. And that's a key word. Audience is nameless, faceless. Community has a name of face and it's two ways relationship. So that's that's how it works in people. So basically you're taking people from let's say YouTube and you're bringing them to your like own like integrated, this white label media platform. And then you're like IDing every user with their like NFT or digital identity or something. And then you can like, what can they do on this platform? Exactly. I mean, listen, Gordon, I mean, Gordon, he can say, hey, guys, you know, first of all, thank you for being here in, in everything he posts on YouTube, right? Thank you for being here. Thank you for loyalty. We reached already a million subscribers. Thank you for your support. By the way, don't forget to click and subscribe. Everybody does that, right? Mm -hmm. And also what they say, don't forget to go on our Patreon page. But he will say, don't forget to go on Gordon.tv where I have exclusive videos for you. I have live shows that are only for my fans. You can subscribe. You can have my NFT, get my membership club. If you're in Dubai with my NFT, you can get access to incredible other events, blah, 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 blah. And you'll be part of my show. You'll be invited as a co-host from now and then. And suddenly you build something. Gordon, we have your media strategy just laid out. Right? I, 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 I need one, so that, that's great. Um, speaking, okay, so fine. I, I love it. Uh, Mikhail, I'm seeing you tonight. So we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to sit down and, and plan this all out and then I'll introduce you to lots of investors. Uh, Torsten, I, I, I want to, I want you to go, I want you to go deep on the fundraising process as it was for your Bitcoin movie and then your Cryptopia movie. 
And then I, I want you to just be kind of be vulnerable, be honest about how that kind of stalled out with Fortitude. And I, I want to understand what it used to be like using Kickstarter and these other things. And then I, I want to kind of like brainstorm or do some management consulting with Miguel about how to, how to reboot what you're doing with NFTs. But I, I want to know how it used to be back in the old days last year. Yeah, so um, 2014, my first film, uh, low budget, as I said, I put basically the idea, I, I filmed maybe one or two days, uh, maybe you guys have been around that famous um, Bitcoin um, and, and yeah, Bitcoin conference in Miami, sure. January 2014. Um, so that's when we first filmed. Um, and so we had a little bit of content, put it on Kickstarter, people loved it, people were excited about the topic. I don't know, I have a couple of, let's say 200 supporters, $20,000. I don't remember the the, the, the numbers. Second film, already a little bit harder, bigger budget, of course, bigger ambitions. I uh, had, um, let's say, 50% funded. Um, and and I, I made. I, I, I'm sorry, let's, let's, let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. First film, you sure. put it on Kickstarter, right? this is 2014. So this is kind of the heyday of that approach, Web that two. and Indiegogo. I, I remember this all being quite trendy. And I, I remember what struck me, and it was kind of like a precursor to ICOs. It's the idea that you don't have investors, you have community or people who, people who want to use the product, funding the development of the product so they can use the product. It's, it's that's like exactly it's your, it's your exactly what it was. So you you pre-sell the the the, the um, you know access to the film that's going to be ready ready in a year and and people support you now and and, and that that was the idea. it worked very well. Um, but you know one of the learnings is it's not really my audience similar to what what uh, uh, Mihai said. It's sort of like owned by Kickstarter or owned by a Twitter. You know my following there. I, I don't really not have the direct relationship. But anyway, it worked it worked fine. Cryptopia slightly different, bigger project. Um, more money was spent up front. I, I, I only needed the finishing funds, sort of like. Um, and again, it worked quite well. So I, I could show a lot of the, the, the film, right? Um, um, and progress. And again, I don't know, it was, I want to say $40,000 we raised that way. Maybe, I don't know, 300 supporters on Kickstarter. Okay, I, I, okay so that was Kickstarter also. Yes, correct. Okay, and did you uh, have any patrons or sponsors individually that you knew kick in? Yeah, a little. Yeah, a little bit. There was a, a, a Screen Australia. There was a German broadcaster, the co-production partner. I mean, there's different. So I my own money, right? I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneurial uh, filmmaker. So most of it was my own money. Um, mm. And now I think that's why you're uh, uh, asking me this question now, like literally right now, my new film, Fortitude, I think is even a better project because space is more interesting to more people than, than crypto ever was, right? Um, we, we finished 90% of the production. I could show oh, like all these... These um, superstars, Neil deGrasse Tyson's in the film, and and you know mm -hmm. United Nations and and the White House and all these uh, rocket scientists, literally, and astronauts are in the film. Um, however, nobody really cares about Kickstarter anymore. So I'm I'm doing all my promotion. Uh, the Twitter doesn't really register. LinkedIn is doing well. Everybody loves great it. great YouTube shows it like this one. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and twenty other podcasts, mm -hmm. but it doesn't translate. People don't really click click on a Kickstarter anymore. I guess the time has, has gone. Um, yeah, I might have more more things to say about that. And so I think I I did the best job with this film, the best film, the, the most interesting one, most content to show. But yet it's not quite working. So uh, I need to change my my tactic. I, maybe I'm learning something about NFTs today, or maybe and what I've also started to do is like um uh, go to organizations say, look, do you want to um screen um a uh, space movie at your space conferences next? Uh, later this year do you want to um you know become an executive producer and uh, your name is all over this case so so more like the the higher level um uh, conversations rather than the crowd the crowd just kind of disappeared on me <laughs> well let, let, let's dig into that a little bit the, how much do you actually need to raise um so the total budget of the of the film is about six hundred thousand, um and i need about 150 um um still so uh, don't know what the numbers is 75 percent finance and and i need to finish 10% of production and 50% of editing. Got it. And, and you and don't just, want just, to sorry, make just it all Elon Musk or whatever. Oh. Sorry, guys, give me one yeah. second, and then outside, I'll, I'll hand it right back to you, and it's okay. Uh, for the audience, including Britt, you're asking really good questions. When we go to the second half, I'm going to bring you live, and then you can ask directly. Um, the audience is actually kind of chomping in the bit to speak with you all. Anastasia, I'm handing it back to you. Please go ahead. No, no, no. I was just kind of going to make a joke. Like Torsten said how much money he wants. And uh, I was like, and you don't want to have Elon Musk or the, the space problems featured. <laughs> Actually, that'd be kind of cool. Dragons blowing up. Okay. So, okay. So <laughs> let's support, let's look at this like management consultant, because this is actually an interesting thought experiment. So you, you have, a, you need 150, right? And you, the whole, the whole budget was 600. So, which, you know, I, I guess by definition, if my math works, you had 450 in the can. So, I mean, it's not that that much money. Okay, so Mihai and Miguel, 
put your heads together, okay? How do we bring Torsten's fundraising efforts up to 2023 spec so that Fortitude can see the light of day and we can all enjoy space? And take yourself off mute. And I want to hear some good ideas. Well, as of May 10th, 2023, your best bet might, might be releasing a meme coin slash shit coin and then rugging everyone. Yeah, and then I said that, but you know, um, that that might be the way to go now because it seems the, to be the play the, the new fashion of Web3 in the last couple of weeks. Or you know, you don't know. rock everyone, but still say that you're gonna use the funds for the movie and maybe they wanna buy the shit coin. I don't know. Yeah, you know how many people have told me this 2014 uh, ICOs were a thing, like altcoins were a thing, and then at 2018-19 with Cryptopia ICO and uh, the Torsten coin and Cryptopia coin, I I, I, I kind of uh, always step back from it, and and I'm a true believer in crypto and in Web3, but um, 95% uh, of these projects are scams, and I'm definitely not interested in running my own scam. I'm a Bitcoin supporter, Ethereum supporter, and and builder, but but uh, yeah, no, no, thank you. But, okay, <laughs> okay, but look, I, I'm not sure that Doge and Shiba and Pepe are, are scams because everyone, I mean, I hope I'm not hurting everyone's feelings. Everyone knows they're useless. You're not buying them for use. You're buying them yeah. because they're a meme. You're buying yeah. them because they're, it's, you know, because it's freaking Pepe, who was an innocent frog, got captured by the alt-right and is, is now breaking, you know, making a run for crypto. So another kind of fun stuff. So, I mean, is, is, it, is it a scam? I mean, if, if people buy bumper stickers supporting Biden, I can't support their choice, but is it a scam? I yeah. Mean, Maybe, maybe it's just the next Kickstarter. It's like, hey guys, buy this so I can finish my movie. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I mean, I would have told you to do an NFT strategy, but you know, in the last couple of weeks, NFTs are seem to be completely dead. So I think I would I would strategize now, but wait a few weeks for the meme coin season to to come to a halt, which is inevitable, and and then uh, for NFT activity to resume. Hopefully yeah. so. How much? Well, how much were you able to raise through NFTs, Miguel, for your movie once again? 800. Around eight hundred and fifty k. Eight hundred. Actually, I think uh, Torsten, you're in a very good position. So I'm currently building like this AI travel startup, and we're also fundraising. And so in your situation, you needed like eight hundred k, and now you only need hundred fifty. So you can say that you already have your like lead investors, and you only need like a little bit to fill up the round. So it's actually like your chances are probably not so bad. And yeah, I, I, also, I, 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 sorry, I would poke at the idea that NFTs are dead. I, I think, you know, bored apes may be dead, but NFTs maybe not because the NFT itself represents the value, but because it's an investment in something else that will produce the value might have legs. So, it's, it's just a channel. Yeah, yeah I'm just so saying that I, th I don't think it's the best time right now. I think it will come back soon, but I think like if you look at the activity on OpenSea last couple of weeks, it's it's gone down horribly. Like it's like down 70% last couple of weeks. So mm. it's just people aren't really paying attention because they're all they're trading meme coins. I think the, the answer here is, uh, Miga alluded to it, so so we were talking about the, the channels or the, or the, the, the tools, right? But the, the actual answer, of course, is I know that Mihai will say this, is build a community, build the audience and, and start doing, you know, think about it as, as, a, as a career move, uh, uh, you know, establish your home, uh, start with, your, uh, with my audience. And I know they're all over the place, but kind of gather them somewhere. And then eventually uh, you'll be able to fundraise maybe better and, and more for the next film. But, but I, I'll let Mihai talk to that because he knows much more and then I do about this. Mihai? I mean, I think both of you are right, and Miguel is 100% right that, you know, people who trade NFTs right now, you know, is, is not the right moment. I think we need to take a, a bit of a step back. Uh, I, I don't think necessarily, Torsten, that your, your target is um, NFT traders who are on OpenSea, right? Uh, they could be but that shouldn't be the, the focus. Uh, it, it shouldn't be your, your inner circle. Um, the inner circle is literally people who are genuinely passionate about what you're doing, the topic you're touching. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, 
you, you, you can treat many subjects in the world, but the world, the, 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 the subject of space is the one that, you know, generates the most passion and, and dreamers and, and engagement because, well, everybody dreams about space, right? And, and there's so many stories that you're touching and, and uh, emblematic and legendary people that you're interviewing and, and stories that you're telling. So I think NFTs shouldn't be the target and the subject. The subject is how passionate are you about space? How passionate are you about what this person and this person that I interviewed uh, and, and what they do, right? So you, you NFTs is, is like a, a, a just a way to, to create the link between you and your film, Torsten, and the and the people you interview, then the concept mm -hmm. and this audience that that's passionate. You can you might even not want to call it an NFT, call it a membership, call it a uh, an engagement an engagement token or an engagement ring if you want, whatever. It doesn't matter. It ha but it has the form and shape of an NFT. That's all. Um, so. And maybe people who never necessarily traded an NFT before, who don't even know that OpenSea exists, but you tell them, as Anastasia rightfully said, uh, guys, we've done the heavy lifting. The money's here. We're ready to go. We reserved the last piece for the real fans of space. That's that's an exclusive opportunity for you to be part of the making of that film and to engage in a community that we're building. And that's exclusive because once those NFTs are sold, it's over. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's going to create, I mean, I want to have one because if you can one. tell me a bit. Right, so, so there you go. So yeah, it's an NFT. You're going to say, oh, we're going to do things with that. We're going to create, you know, live events or physical, physical uh, uh, gatherings and meetups. And, you know, people can trust you that you're not a rug puller, right? That you're going to run away with that money of the NFT or the, with a film. You're not going anywhere, right? So you're going to say, that's my journey. That's my mission uh, to then add more benefits to you. And even more you can add, by the way, I'm going to keep doing films, right? That's not my last film. So I'm going to do you give you a privilege to be uh, in the very first uh circle of people in the know whenever I, I start working or imagining my next film. Yeah. And I'm gonna share it for you. And suddenly I mean you could you could you're gonna have people buying that stuff and, and they they wouldn't care if you know the NFT market is low or high. That that's irrelevant because it's about the connection with you, the support with you. And something that might, they might get that's going to be just emotional and experience. L let me ask again, because sorry, Miguel, how did you get your maybe throw in? How did you get your first brainstorm about going down the NFT route to fund your film? What, what was the, what was the flash moment? So the first idea came from a fellow crypto punk. Um, Tony Herrera, who's a legend in the yeah. NFT space. He was just on last time. He was on our last all show. All right, great. Or the yeah, show Tony's right now. Was, or the one, yeah, we had him. Is Tony's he the one amazing. that made you do your exactly. crypto punk face instead of your real face? No, I just I just like that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, with, with both of you, I both had this separate conversation about, I, you know, the, the, the way the show is, and I guess I'm dating myself. I actually like to see your face. I know this random. Yeah. But you know, and terribly yeah. outdated. But anyways, okay. So Tony Herrera, who was just on the show. That's yeah, Tony. To, to, Tony's a very good friend and uh, has been an advisor for the project. And he came up with the idea at first. Because, um, he was he had an idea to do something for short films on the blockchain and contacted me. You know, as a filmmaker, and he had seen my short film Cayadita, and he contacted me to to see if I wanted to collaborate on this project for short films. Then that led to, I told him, you know, I'm very focused on trying to fundraise the feature film now and said, why don't you fundraise it in Web3, you know, with NFTs or with punks or something like that. At first, his idea was just just do like a fundraiser among crypto punks and it mm -hmm. would be easy to, to raise a million dollars. Uh, then, you know, from that first inkling of an idea came the whole NFT strategy that we implemented. Okay, I just chatted him and if, if I can get him to join the show, I will. 
that'd, that'd be kind of funny. And by the way, I, I absolutely love Mihai what you said about this like community element and uh, this is like the marketer in me is just really happy about the strategy and this is actually the question that I wanted to ask uh, to ask Miguel like what would be like so these people that purchased an NFT which funded your movie what's happening with them like have you offered them like any like private chat or you know any like other elements other than the fact that they own this NFT Is that too? Miguel? Miguel, you're, you're on mute. Sorry, I missed the last part of that, sorry. No, so, so my question was like, whether you have offered some like community elements to all of these people who purchased your NFT, which, you know, funded your movie, like, do you have like a chat with them? Do you have some, I don't know, did you meet them? Did you offer to do something with them? Basically, in addition to them having this, this mm -hmm. uh, NFT? Yeah, um, the rewards of the NFT collection functioned kind of similar to traditional Kickstarters in that there were different price levels, depending on how much you wanted to contribute to the movie, you would get a rare NFT, but also you would get additional benefits. So like, for example, in the basic level, everyone gets like a thank you credit in the movie or a link to watch the film at some point in the future. But then in the top level, they get credited as producers in the movie and they get an invite to, to come on set and experience the filming firsthand, things like that. Cool. And then, yeah, there's a token gated Discord where anyone can you know ask questions. And also we did a very cool thing with Beam where we set up our own um, platform on Beam that was fully token gated for our community. And they got to, to watch very cool uh, behind the scenes content that we would upload live as the filming was happening because it's it's very common for for people to do behind the scenes but it's very rare for film fans to get to experience uh, BTS um filming as as it's happening so like literally we had a behind the scenes uh, videographer on set every day and literally on the day after the shoot he would already upload uh, kind of the video diaries of yesterday's shoot. So like we were able to we can you add the screen share so I, I can I can show the I can show to everyone the, the uh, Miguel's page. Sure. Uh, you, you, you know what? Unfortunately, I'm doing this webinar stuff and I'm still taking out the settings and I can't. If you send me the link or just, just put it in the chat, you should, you should have access to yeah. chat. Yeah, and Miguel's I, page. Yeah. And I'm adding name I tags for it. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Good job. But yeah, that's think, perfect. perfect. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I think it's only visible to the organizer and the speakers. We'll, we'll put it in the we'll put it in the show notes. Actually, no, no, the, yeah. the chat the chat I think goes to everyone. I think you can hit the drop down and go. By the way, I want to I wanted to mention something about uh, Mihai's um, recommendations to to Tornsten, mm -hmm. which I thought were were very on point. Uh, the only thing that um, that I would uh, counter is the Mihai's argument that you know um, I don't know how you phrase it exactly, but you seem to say that. If you come, if you build your community in that way, uh, uh, out of mostly, you know, fans of of Thorsten himself and of space, uh, then you can activate them to buy NFTs, even even though they won't be NFT collectors already or people who are on OpenSea, etc. And I I really don't agree with that. I think uh, it's still too early for NFTs, and so it's incredibly hard to sell someone their first NFT. So if you you know, if you go out and create a, a community of huge space fans, um, you know, Im imagine, imagine Torsten, you already had an Instagram that is all about space and that has a million followers. I think that you publish an NFT crowdfund there and you publish it every day for a week and you won't sell any NFTs. I like, I, I, would, I would, I would bet on that. I mean, you would sell a couple, but I would bet a lot of money that 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 audience won't translate. And the reason is because the learning curve in, in order for someone to buy their first NFT, and this is both technical learning curve, but also psychological learning curve, is still is still very steep. So it's so incredibly hard to sell someone their first NFT. And so if 
if you or anyone in the audience are thinking of doing an NFT collection or drop or whatever, I would very much recommend that you focus your marketing energy on people who are already NFT collectors and not try to preach to the general public because it will just it will just um, fall in the vacuum, I think. Like interesting. I think it's an interesting point. I just, I actually, I just looked at your uh, the the page um, of the Coladita with uh, with Beam, and there's like this beautiful button, uh, get get your all access pass, and uh, mm -hmm. then it leads to this page where you can like somehow like maybe purchase an an NFT to get an access. And so this reminds me about this trend to like use blockchain products but not disclose that they are blockchain so i think reddit they did like nft avatars but they called them just avatars and i guess if you like market this process as something where indeed people are purchasing this like digital you know donation card or digital like whatever like where you don't actually you you simplify it to as much as possible then you can like have better chances of selling it and i and i really agree with the point that yeah like maybe you should you should also go after the nft crowd but it would if it would be easier to convince someone who also likes the space and stores and uh content to like invest even you know hundred dollars in his fundraising campaign yeah, yeah, no, that, that's my point exactly. I think I think there's maybe like a million people in the whole world who have NFTs or are actively trading or know um, enough to to you know buy an NFT in an instant. And I think what you have what you should do if you have a space movie, you should try to find the niche within that million people who are space fans, so that 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 you know you 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 cross both interests. But I think like and 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 there's so many examples of what I'm saying. Like there's been a huge a huge ton of very big celebrities who have launched NFT projects thinking that they would be able to activate their web two audiences to buy their NFTs and they have tanked horribly. So you know it's um you know I'm not inventing anything. It's you can check it on the chain and and there's been like like people like you wouldn't imagine the level of fandom that I'm talking about. Like I, I for example, remember a, a connection with Ronaldinho. He has maybe like a hundred million followers on Instagram, and they couldn't sell over two thousand NFTs in a collection of five or six thousand. So I guess for people wow. who are not familiar with NFTs, you could just send them like a Kickstarter link, right? Maybe. I think Miguel. I think Miguel has has a, has a point uh, with the fact that you know the word NFT puts down everybody who is not into NFTs today. Uh, <clears throat> so I think it's it's about uh, and and again, pretty much all the projects that have tried to do that uh, by selling NFTs kind of missed it because you don't really know what an, what's what's an NFT number one. Mm -hmm. And you don't really know what it gives you. Usually it was like, oh, get Ronaldinho's NFT and you get uh, whatever, I don't know. Uh, or even your know, Paramount with, with Nickelodeon, they launched, they launched the NFTs for the, uh, the Rugrats. Or you can, you can buy the characters, cool. So they sold like in, in 10 minutes, two and a half million dollars. But then what? Well, I have the Rugrats, then, then what? It's just right. a collectible, a uh, digital collectible, which people were very excited yeah. about, but then what, right? You, what you're talking exactly. about is then, more like then, a... Then what? So it yeah. puts down people who don't understand it and are, are not into it, to make us point. And then then what? So I think to not be, I mean, to, to give you some lines of hope, Torsten, uh, <laughs> is that probably, uh, you know, putting too much forward the concept that it is an NFT, it's, it's not good. Second, uh, you know, I, I think I think the positioning, and we can work on on you know about the wording, but it's more about be part of uh, you know the the the, the support club of Thorsten for his film. How can you participate? I mean, that's the way to participate. That's going to give you, uh, the, you know, the digital digital uh, privileges or or a digital ownership into, into something that Thorsten is creating, right? Uh, and and actually, I think it should be it should be non custodial. I mean, it should be custodial in the sense that you know people who don't get it, they just log in with their you know Google account uh, and pay with card. Uh, but those who get it, they can then take 
it out from there and put it in their wallet or pay in crypto. Uh, so NFT should be as much, you know, not, not front and center as most, most projects, uh, most projects do. Um, look, and look yeah, back, I mean, it's, Sorry, it's, it's a tentative balance. Perfect. Uh, guys, oh. we, we, we have an audience that's hot to trot. So I want to open it up to them. Uh, Marco, I'm going to have you go first and then Britt and then everyone else raise your hands so I know to bring you on. And then Marco, here we go. I'll let him talk. Oh, Tony joined. Oh, fantastic. Oh, Tony, oh, you're fantastic. there. Okay. Uh, Tony, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you on video. Don't, don't talk yet, but I'm really happy you're here. You don't want my video? I am wearing a shirt, Gordon. No, no, we're, 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 I mean, of course we want to see your video. We cannot miss a show without mentioning Marcus' shirt. <laughs> only because I only put them on for Gordon. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Okay. Uh, Tony, glad you're here. We're, we're going to jump to you in a second, but uh, Marco, uh, if you got a shirt, turn on your video and then. Will you raise uh, no, you have to you have to tell me to turn on my video. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm still getting used to this. Hold on. <laughs> I let's see. Don't be afraid to be a little bit authoritarian. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is very, oh, very. I thought censored, I did this already. Uh, Promote the panelist. You should be there. Okay. Oh, you're rejoining as a panelist. Here we go. See, I'm learning. There's Marco, and then ask to start video. And. That's just our video. There. Wow. I, I, I've, I've now, I'm, I'm going to Zoom University apparently in real time. Tony. So, all right, Marco, go, go first and then we'll bring Tony on. I think Tony is walking the streets of Tokyo. I think uh, he is too. Same, same as last time. Tony, you're on mute, but that's okay. So, um, just so I was muted. Marco, go. Yeah, um, well, I'm Marco Annabelli. I'm uh, in the Cayman Islands currently. Um, this is where I call my home. Um, I'm actually working on a project in the film thing for the last three years. Uh, the take is slightly different than Beam. Um, and I think it's uh, something that you guys have been talking about uh, significantly here because uh, when you go into the NFT space or even ICO space, to be fair, uh, in most cases, it's a give us your money, I'm going to go make this film, and you get a little pat on the back sometimes, and often nothing at all, other than maybe a little picture or an NFT that says you were involved in the uh, funding of this thing. And as Anastasio was, uh, I hope I got that right, um, was uh, saying uh, earlier, is it's, it's, it's okay for the, I hate to say it this way, but let's call it the dumb money. Um, that that's fine. That's enough. But the the true fan wants to sort of get something, you know, interactive, ongoing, right? And if, if the NFT, for example, paid some portion of the receipts or whatever uh, based on the success of the film, that would be great. Um, but then, as you got a whole coding in, infrastructure uh, requirement to make that happen. Um, the project that I've been working on decided to try, try to attack it from a different perspective rather than uh, go, going down the beam model, which is this you know wonderful platform uh, that you can make your own, which by the way, fantastic platform. Um, they went with the idea, let's create a community of people who like film and then give them all the options let, let any creator come in and approach the entire community and saying, here's a project I want to do. But when you do that, you put your deal on the table. And it's not that different from what Torsten, you've been going through generally, which is you're going to guys and saying, hey, I've got this great idea. I want you to fund it so that I can then distribute it on Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. In this case, it's uh, the difference is, is that the person you're talking to is not a studio <clears throat> or a distributor. It's you're talking to the fans and saying, I'm going to do this project. And, and your, my deal to you is uh, for five million dollars or whatever it is I need to to raise to do my project. You get a cut of my of my project right now, it, rather than uh, you getting editorial control over my project and you getting 100 percent of the back end on this thing. And I get nothing uh, post. You get to make your own deal. You get to say, I'm going to give up 
twenty percent of my my back end and uh, uh, to the people who funded me on a pro rata basis based on how how they uh, how much they funded. This platform does that, not using NFT so much as just using it as a an internal ecosystem, blockchain based. Uh, that allows anybody who's a fan to join a community around a particular project and then participate in that project. You know, you still have, you know, creative input, if you wish, by having chats and things like that, but the filmmaker is left to do their thing. And the success of the film itself defines the success of that filmmaker. And the size of their community grows based on their success as a filmmaker. But all within a community that is decentralized, not censorable, or reasonably, reasonably not censorable. Um, and yeah, where the right. creator but, makes I mean, their I, own this, deal. This, this is something you mentioned before, and I, I kind of let it go. Is, is your platform not censorable? Of all someone... platforms are censorable. I mean, they're platforms. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'll ask me, hi. Beam, because you, you kind of threw that out there before. So uh, it's very hardly censorable. It's uh, like yeah. you need the thermonuclear option to censor it because it's literally stored on decentralized storage. So you have to take down, you know, Arwe or IPFS. You have to take down the streaming part of it with LifePeer. Uh, it's um, let's say is not. It's it's uh, orders of magnitude less censorable than anything that's around today. Okay, can, can you but, remove? Uh, I, I agree. I agree to Marco's point. Everything is censorable. At the end of the day, uh, you know, you, Egypt shuts have, off the internet. Uh, I mean, <laughs> exactly. Bitcoin, Bitcoin can disappear. Just shut down the internet. That's that's. I, but even then, even then, it's it's it's. Uh, you have you have alternative networks that they, they can still run your Bitcoin nodes. So that's okay. that's. M Mihai, are but, you able to remove someone else's content from Beam? We have the ability to remove it in the first <coughs> couple of days. Yes, in the first couple of days. Uh, if there's some form of detection that there is absolutely illegal content that's illegally there. But in the sense of illegal, like written in the law. Uh, I'm not here to judge if, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> some 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 concepts that people debate are are illegal right uh like like you know me media could think yeah, yeah, yes i yes i understand what you're getting at fine so i i i believe in unrestricted political speech as well now I, i'm gonna set you up for something you can bypass the bridge point i don't want to see you be the next kim.com you know is, is this a distributed mega upload where people can use this to distribute copyright things and what do you do so, so uh, the thing is, is not even our infrastructure. It's is decentralized infrastructure. I mean, you don't even need Beam for that. You just, you just go on IPFS and Arweave, and you just put your content there. You don't, you don't need us for that. So, but, but you, you, you know, okay, but, but you, you, you did give yourself, and we can always, we can always move on if you want. But the, you, you do have the ability to remove it for some period of days, and then the. So every everything that you upload to decentralized storage mm -hmm. has a, a buffer period of you know twenty four to seventy two hours, into which even even the the nodes that are participating in a decentralized model and I'm not going to go deep into the IPFS or Arweave protocol which is open source, okay. even them they can decide I don't want to take that content on board if they say if they decide so. Usually nobody looks at it, but if someone raises a flag and everybody raises a flag, so then it's a majority of people raising a flag. That content is just not shared by anyone in the in the network, and that's that's beyond that that's beyond even beam. It's literally how those uh, you know decentralized storage platforms work. As, as I, I, I think the next Julian Assange or Edward Snowden would be well advised. Not giving them advice, but I, I can see it naturally occurring to them these IPFS. Oh yeah, but I mean that it's been around for for years now. So yeah, yes. of course. Interesting. Um, good points by Marco. Tony, take yourself off mute because you you know Miguel was talking about how you. I'll, I'll let you guys say it. The, say how you put Tony, your together to make the NT NFC raise happen. Always walking. That's where you're thin. Hey guys. Hey. Good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, I, I, as you guys were talking, and uh, 
Mihai was running, uh, waxing poetically about decentralization and, and, and the virtues of decentralization in film. All I kept thinking is like, okay, I gotta stop taking these calls with, with Gordon, where like I'm walking in a metropolitan street and, and <laughs> I'm, you know, this is the second time, Gordon, that we've taken a call on, uh, on the streets of Tokyo. It's great. So but, how's everybody? Everyone's good, but here's what I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about the moment that yes. you and Miguel came together and decided, decided to go down the NFT route for raising the funds for his film. And then we're gonna see whether we can do a version of that for Torsten. Okay, so, so, okay, so actually, from what I remember, and, and Miguel maybe has a, a different take on it, it was kind of like a cold call that I put to Miguel because I was actually trying to get somebody, and Miguel was my, was my candidate. I was trying to get somebody to decentralize, or not to decentralize, I was somebody, trying to get somebody to tokenize a film. So, mm -hmm. they, so this all came about as um, back, what, I don't know, Miguel, you, you could probably have a better recollection of it, but it's been like, since, since we did the, since the token of Caeta, it's been what, a year and a half, two years maybe. And the idea was that I was trying to find a film director, you know, cinematographer like Miguel, to essentially create an NFT of a film, where basically the, uh, the NFT was essentially the, like we all recognize films as the cover of the film. It was kind of slightly mm -hmm. animated, but it would basically be a way for you to see a film online. And at that time I had reached out to Luke from uh, Brave Browser, which mm -hmm. famously has the bat token in their ecosystem. And, uh, and the idea that I pitched to, Miguel was, hey, Miguel, what if you did a, uh, a film NFT of, you know, an NFT of your film where, the, where it comes preloaded with bat tokens? And if, if it comes preloaded with bat tokens, then you can use those tokens to stream the film in the browser. And that was actually my pitch to, to Miguel. But the Miguel obviously had the idea of creating the, the, uh, the feature film, the, the entire film, because at the time, Caeta was a short. And that was actually, from what I remember, the pitch that I had for Miguel. But uh, maybe Miguel has a different uh, recollection of, of that of that discussion. So Miguel got cold called. Miguel? No, no, all good, all good. I just had to move rooms to charge my laptop. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was it was like that. Um, and then, but but then I think what happened was like I said, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But you know, mostly now I'm focused on on the feature of Creadita and to get that funded. And then Tony said, oh, but why don't you fund it with NFTs or with blockchain? And, and that's when we started, you know, um, going back and forth and workshopping that idea of how would that work? Because at the time, nobody had ever funded a feature film with NFTs. And so it was uncharted territory and it took, you know, a long time to strategize um, how it would make sense to do this. But in the end, it all worked out. How did you find your audience? So you said like your suggestion was to go after people who already know what NFTs are. So among these people, how were you able to separate the segment which would be interested in the kind of film you're making? Uh, I It wasn't um, the main kind of value proposition for Carita wasn't um, very targeted or specific to the actual film. We didn't talk so much about why you should support this film. It was more about the idea that crowdfunding films through NFTs was a very novel thing and very innovative. And like it could start a cool new wave of indie cinema. And it was so the pitch to NFT collectors was more this NFT is historic because it's one of yeah. the first movies ever to be funded by NFTs rather than this movie is going to be. Mm -hmm. cool. exactly I mean, what you wanted. It, it, was, yeah. it was also very helpful for us that we already had an award-winning short film on which the movie is based that also had been acquired by HBO because that that first of all it gives people a real sense that this is a, a, a real project not you know like some weird youtuber wanting to make a movie but you know this is like a professional thing and also if they were so inclined, they could go on our website, watch the 15 minute short and then see for themselves if they like these and they wanna support it becoming a longer feature. 
Well, that's that's where I can uh, come in because um, uh, Tony, you missed the the earlier introduction, but I made two uh, films, right? One was Bitcoin: The End of Money, 2015, and then Cryptopia, which was very very big um, uh, a couple of years ago, and it's still going strong, including Al Jazeera. I, I don't think I mentioned this to the um, folks in in Dubai. Um, so I kind of I, I kind of bridge that that world as well. So the, the, my community, my my fan base is crypto native. Um, I just could reach them now with, with Kickstarter because maybe they they don't believe in centralized uh, platforms anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, th now I'm changing my my fundraising plans to just go after um, high profile people who say, okay, I want to be associated with Torsten Hoffman's next film. I want to be um, on the poster. I want to be uh, you know go to the moon with that that little. Um, the moon mission thing that we have going on for the space film. Yeah, no, yeah, that's exactly I, what I thought about. Like these people that they they have already watched your previous movies. Like this is a very good competitive advantage of of your of your movie compared to others. Like even if it's not about crypto anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's hugely beneficial if you wanted to do an NFT fundraiser or any kind of crypto fundraiser. The fact that your previous movies have been about crypto and that the crypto audience already knows them and knows you as a filmmaker, that's hugely beneficial. I think I have to say there's been very few feature films still since Cayarita that have been fully funded by NFTs. In terms of fiction films, I only know of two, uh, Cayarita and then uh, Julie Pacino's uh, Keepers of the Inn. And then in terms of documentaries, there's been a couple more. And at least one of them is about crypto. And it's, and it's to this day... The, the the most successful NFT fundraiser for a feature film uh, ever. It's the Infinite Garden documentary about the foundation of Ethereum. And they raised, I think, $2 million in a matter of hours. So obviously, you know, you're preaching to, to the choir. You're telling yeah, them, they, come fund a film they, that is about you and your revolution. That's yeah, they, they um actually they might get a little bit of my Ethereum and uh, my my Vitalik interview from 2014. I was like one of the first ones to interview him before the launch, um, but we're still de debating. Uh, but I know those guys. Yeah, a very cool project. I love it. Yeah. Great, guys. We we have a couple more audience members who want to uh, have ask questions. So Corey, you've been patient. I, mean, no, I think we, we we haven't um uh, let uh, Tony kind of respond to to oh, that. Oh, sorry, Tony, go ahead. I think yeah. yeah. Uh, so. The I heard both of the commentaries, but so what was what was the question specifically for me? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say. Can, can, can you you help, can help Torsen? No wonder Torsen, you want to be let Tony continue. So okay, you said Tony, we're, we're kind of running you this as look. I, I don't have a stake in this. I'm just kind of doing this as a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. Imagine this is a it management consulting group. How, can we apply? the model that was useful with Miguel to a space film, such as the one that Torsten's doing, he's got 150K left to raise. You know, he's done two great projects. This one's outside the lane of crypto, but it's, I think, you know, as Mihai pointed out, everyone loves space is the, but Miguel also raised the point that, you know, if you look at OpenSea, NFTs seem dead-ish right now. Can we apply this model to Torsten and Fortitude, his space film, or how do you update this for 2023? Uh, I think so. I think so. There's look. The space is obviously transitioned, and and entities in the in in the space of transition. So when we look at you know with for instance in Caidita, which is what I have most familiarity with, you know even Miguel, and this is actually something that Miguel and I have discussed. The initial idea that I had for Miguel, and actually Mar uh, uh, Marco alluded to it earlier was that I proposed to Miguel that we do the NFT in the way where the, um, the, the, the NFT holders would essentially become executive producer credits, right? So I, I buy the NFT and I'm essentially an investor, if you will, you know, and I have a stake in, in the film in the sense that if the film is highly successful, and, and mind you, most films are not successful, you know, but in this case, if the film was successful, um, I would essentially partake in the revenue from the film, right? Um, that wasn't done for a variety of reasons, and I understand why Miguel didn't do it, you know, because, you know, as, as most things, lawyers, lawyers get involved, and so, and, you know, and then in the case of what Mark was discussing, it, it, it's all really good, except with the United, within the United States, if you're producing a film, and most parts of the world, if you have a token that then de denotes some do sort of, you know, dividend, it's a security, right, and 100%. that's the issue that, that you have, right? right, so, and, and nobody would know that better than you, Gordon, right, so, so the question then becomes, okay, how do you, how do you do it, right? So the concept of NFTs is really kind of interesting. If we go back 
if, if, you, if you look at NFTs as films and how they can support film, I actually think this is really kind of a, a really interesting topic at this stage of where we're at in the market. What I mean by that is if we're in the midst of a bear market. You know, you got NFTs that people bought at highs that are now worth 10 times less, maybe 100 times less. And yet the, 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 the place, you know, the, the space continues to build, right? And so the, the space is looking for that next NFT that is going to do something. You're seeing a little bit with, 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 um, with Artifact and what they're doing with Nike. You're seeing it with Adidas. You're seeing it, most of the innovation is still being driven, if you want to call it innovation, is really being driven around apparel and, and the fact that you can have an NFT that gives you some sort of membership aspect. Uh, you know, think of it like the Bored Apes. You get into you get into the board ape ecosystem, but then others are like basically it's a it's a token that allows you to claim some level of merchandise, uh, to forge a, a shoe, a tennis shoe, or, or something, right? And we haven't really toyed or played in the area that essentially Carita kind of and and Miguel mentioned it, uh, Julie Pacino's film, and, and even mm -hmm. what Tor is trying to do. Um, in that realm of like, you know, if you look at film and NFTs, it's very small. It's it's tiny. It's it's it's. It, I don't think it, it really even registers if you go to OpenSea and try to look for film NFTs. But I think that the use case is still very much there. And the use case that I would propose to creators now, I, mind you, I'm not a creator, right? I'm I'm a, mostly a collector and a, a an individual who gets involved in startups with crazy ideas, like like basically proposing to Miguel that he tokenize. The, the creation of, of, of Gaita and the fund that through that tokenization. But if you look at it, let's go back to what fundamentally a film is. A film is basically a film that, you know, you got a creator, you might have a script. You basically have a, a whole team of creators, creatives that basically create a film. But at the end of the day, they need an audience, right? And, and right now, the way that we see films is essentially through you go to a movie theater and you buy a ticket and you see the film, or you maybe have a subscription to um, any of the major content providers, whether it's Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, whatever, right? And, it, and I would argue that the Hulu, particularly the Hulu, Netflix, Amazon experience, Netflix, is really a token. I mean, you buy a membership where every month you pay them for the token, right? The, the token is through an email address and, and a user login, you know, username and, and password. and so. Let's go back to the premise. So to answer your question, Gordon, yes, mm -hmm. I think that Thor should totally explore the additional funding of the film. And I think it could be done if it's structured in a certain way that it's kind of like, okay, there's an innovation. I, I think that you can plead or appeal to an audience on several levels, right? It's like, okay, maybe I'm really interested in space or maybe I'm interested in just helping the creator, director fulfill the rights to see a film. But most human beings are, are driven by incentives, right? They're, they be, mm -hmm. want to be rewarded for something. So like in this case, I would be looking, okay, well, so let's do the film. Maybe I'm a space enthusiast, maybe I'm not, but I would be, you know, let's say I'm not a space enthusiast. I would be sort of like looking to Thor and say, all right, I want to do this with you because I want to disrupt the film industry uh, or the creative video process. And I want to do it through Beam. And like, like I'm bullish on Beam. I'm bullish on Beam in many respects. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know if Mihai would describe Beam in this way, but I describe Beam as kind of being your uh, your WordPress for creators, for for content creation and video video content creators, and in this case, film. Uh, and I think that there's so much that could be done, and I think we're barely starting to scratch the surface. And I would challenge most directors, including Miguel himself, to rethink it. I mean, Miguel is can free is free to share or not share the conversation we had, but I actually pushed back recently to Miguel. Because I said to him, you know, think of it. The model that most creators are going to use is, and, and Caeta is doing this, and, and once again, Miguel can correct me if I'm wrong, but the model that Miguel's pursuing right now is that he's going to want to get the film to a wider audience, and the wider audience is through the film, the normal film distribution channels that you have. And I push back on Miguel, and I'm like, why? why? Why not just bring it out? Just let anybody who helped fund your movie see it and let them see it first. And the and and Miguel um, was basically okay. Well, you know, there's there's a certain uh, strategy that we're following. And without me getting onto this soapbox and, and ranting about this, uh, because I want to hear it from Miguel and, and Thor, I think that right now 
despite the bear market, it's actually the best time for you to try to fund a film and create and 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 content creation through tokenization. I think that there's a, I think that that I think that the also the the aspect of earning revenue through a token for a revenue that for a video or, or a movie that produces film or produces I think it should it needs to be challenged. I think the SEC needs to be challenged. Who is the individual who's gonna challenge that? I don't know. But I would certainly be willing to fund Tor if he said to me, I'm actually gonna give you a token, Tony, that gives you revenue. I I I would I would buy that token. Obviously it's easy for me to buy the token because Tor is uh, the creators are the ones who are taking the risk because they're the ones that are getting in trouble for the for the for the giving me a token that creates some revenue. But that's the token that I would be looking to invest in. We are definitely going to look into it hard and, and try to challenge that for sure, because I agree that that's the ideal model for sure. Let just me, a quick, let, yeah, I got, yeah so go ahead, Gordon. Just, just a thought. I mean, almost every, well, most countries, I should say, they do have a crowdfunding law. In the U.S., it's Correct. C, CF, for example. And I know Europe has it. I don't know how it works. Uh, I think Turkey has it. There's other countries that have crowdfunding law. I, I, it would be an interesting use case to use, say, Reg CF in the United States as a platform for indie film fundraising because the majority of, I think, Reg CF, either it's cap, was a million, is a million, or was a million. I, I think most indie films, the type that Tor's doing, are a million or less. So it would be interesting to use Reg CF as maybe a cover or an envelope for doing the NFT fundraise. That'd be an innovative sort of thing. Yeah, and one might one might argue that it's more than a million now. Just real, real, good. Maybe it's five million. Mark, I remember it went up, but I, I forget exactly. But guys, ha have no doubts in your mind. The moment you start sharing revenue or profits, it is a security. Hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Don't play. Okay. And I don't want yeah, to you guys get it's free legal advice for everyone. But you know there is crowdfunding legislation where the burden is much less. It's somewhere between a, a private sale and a public sale. It's. You know, people only invest a little bit, you cap what they can put in, and maybe that's a way to get around it or to do it. Yeah, uh, there's, um, there's, for example, a, a website um, like a, for Web2 crowdfunding uh, called WeFunder. And I have friends who have funded full feature films through WeFunder. Um, and that's, uh, you know, anyone can invest, any, everyone gets revenue shares. Uh, you don't have to be accredited. You buy shares with a credit card and you can buy for as less as $100. So I think definitely someone should like build a platform that allows that, but through NFTs and blockchain and then challenge the SEC to, to, to kind of uh, figure out why we found there would be legal and that, and that wouldn't, right? And by the way, just to Marcus's point, so in March, 2001, the limit was raised from 1 million to 5 million. For crowdfunding under Reg CF. That, that's a big, I want to I want to let Corey and Corey's been very patient to ask a question. Um, Corey, give me a second. I'm gonna bring you up here and have you speak. Hopefully, you're still there. Hey, Corey. Hey guys, nice to talk to you. Hey. Uh, hey, Mihai, hey. it's been a while. Oh yeah, so I was gonna say that it's a slightly complex uh, with the security with the. Um, you know, reg C crowdfunding laws, because you can do that with security tokens at the moment. But mm -hmm. you know, the, the problem with security tokens is you lose probably 80 to 90% of existing web three investors, if you want to finance that way, because you have to go through, you know, a relatively centralized platform like Securitize and, and dox your real name and all of that sort of stuff in order to qualify as a crowdfunding platform. There's no problem mm -hmm. with raising you know, small amounts of money that way. The problem is with, do, with doing it anonymously. But I would say that, you know, I think that the space for financing, you know, the next generation of entertainment for, you know, through blockchain and NFTs is huge. Uh, you know, I'm working on a project uh, and raising financing for a company in this space um, right now. But I would say that it's much, much easier uh, if you actually go bigger with the vision and try and create a much larger franchise because, the problem with, you know, limited series or feature films is you have very few ways to reward your holders because there's not going to be, you know, a second, uh, you know, a sequel to Kaita. If you have a, you know, something like an animation or a science fiction or a fantasy series where there's 
you know, five seasons, you know, large character arts, there's a potential for a game long term, there's a potential for a metaverse experience. It's much easier to uh, construct a value proposition for the digital collectibles, which is how you should phrase it and not NFTs, that, uh, that does not rely on them getting a portion of profits. So I think that like, you know, some great businesses that are doing this in the, at the moment is like Planosaurs, uh, which is a Solana NFT project. They built like some, some clay dinosaurs and they raised the financing to, you know, continue to develop their IP through an NFT sale. They raised like $1.3 million uh, and then they've gotten another 600K in, in royalty sales. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously they haven't sold any of the equity in the business, but they've got, you know, a, a game coming, they've got, uh, you know, short form video content to keep the audience engaged and you can customize, you know, your Clanosaur with sort of the game is basically something like El Diablo or World of Warcraft, where there's, you know, a, a drop where you send your, your Clanosaur on missions and you get, <laughs> you know, a percentage of a percentage chance of getting, you know, armor or helmets or, you know, special items for your Clanosaur that allow you to customize it. And by customizing your NFT, it increases the emotional attachment to, to that NFT. So you're less likely to sell and you become, you know, more engaged with, with the brand and the IP. The, the just general goal is to, you know, increase the emotional connection. I think that, you know, strategies like that, where you're trying to, you know, bootstrap up something like the Minions franchise or Angry Bird or Game of Thrones through NFTs is much, much easier than limited series content. I think that I think those are great comments. Do you guys have responses? I guess it's partially a question of how much are you willing to invest to raise money. Also, what business are you in? <laughs> are you in the NFT business or are you in the film business? Well, by the way, I got just just really short idea, really quick. Um, mm. Miguel, you mentioned like two things earlier. First, is that there is like no one talks about NFTs. And second, um, I forgot what it was, but anyways. Um, oh, a second was about how you were selling people's uh, historic, like historical, like how they were making this impact by funding a movie through an NFT. And so maybe this can be something that can be can be done. But like the hype in NFT recently was uh, Bitcoin ordinals, like this Bitcoin NFTs. And potentially, I mean, I'm not sure if it can be technically done, but I think it should be. If you do Bitcoin NFTs and you raise money through Bitcoin NFTs, first, you're getting in on a hype. And secondly, you're doing something historic because I'm like 100% sure that that would be like the first movie funded by Bitcoin NFTs. And you could also connect with Bitcoin NFTs communities and they could like get in to promote this thing because for them, it would be something innovative and it could potentially like allow you to raise money like really quickly. Could I just bring up, just because you brought it up, and I, I have to say this, has no one sort of woken up and realized that Bitcoin, BTC20 and Bitcoin NFTs is the most recent attack on the Bitcoin network to re render it basically useless. <laughs> Was it, is it, is it's it like Crypto Kitties for Bitcoin? It's Crypto Kitties. <laughs> yeah, it's the Crypto Kitties of Bitcoin. <laughs> right. well, yeah, well, I, well, let's get back to Corey's point, because you know they, he, he, he scratched my securities lawyer edge, which, which is... It, it, you, you made a claim which may be true, which is if you have to do regulation CF crowdfunding in the U.S. or something the analogous in another big, country, sir, that, that's not meant for that. Sorry, is someone yelling in the background? That was that was that was Mihai. No, Mihai, what was, what was your comment? Oh no, no, I was just interjecting to the fact that yeah that's that's uh, nfts don't, don't necessarily belong to the bitcoin network but that's that's beyond yeah. the point. okay okay marco you've successfully derailed the conversation getting back to court's <laughs> point okay the you know he, 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 typical typical of this i mean i i want to i want to crack this nut because it's interesting I want, Corson is a very interesting his situation is emblematic of the situation I think a lot of people are facing, which, which you have creative, independent filmmakers. You know, they're not operating their their video channel. They're they're really trying to come up with something feature or documentary that's long format that that needs funding. And how do you do this now? Now that Kickstarter, traditional Kickstarter, has sunsetted, are you back to these individual meetings and selling out to some 
influential people, or do you have an alternative format? And I'm, and I'm, I'm sure the idea of crowdfunding with the Break CF and films has been banded about before. I'm not sure how much I've seen about it in the adding film to Reg CF to crypto slash NFTs. But the, the, the things that people have to go through KYC or meet some basic requirements of documentation when they buy a, a crowdfunding share, Reg CF share, might alienate a group of people. But I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that's true. I want to get other people's points of view because there, yes, there's an anonymous rebel component to all this. But if you're supporting a film and not doing it for an investment purpose, you're not really buying that Reg CF, I think, for investment. I don't know if anyone's planning to retire on their Fortitude shares. But maybe they, maybe they just understand that this is the way to get out the fundraise in a way that will reach the public. So, Corey, you're welcome mm -hmm. to comment, and others, you're welcome to join, join jump in on that. Yeah, so I think the 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 format to do that in is a security token. It's it's fairly like the the regulatory structure for that is pretty well established. Mm -hmm. I think it really depends how it, it goes back to what Miguel was saying earlier. Like the problem is if you're trying to convert your existing community based to invest in NFTs, you're gonna have a very, very difficult time if they're not Web3 okay. native. I think you're similar gonna you're gonna have a very difficult time uh, converting sort of people that may buy your NFT for speculation in in, in Web3 without having a, a strong attachment to to the creator uh, to get them to go to something like a platform like Securitize, you know, sign mm -hmm. up, do all of that stuff, and, and then you know, spend a couple hundred dollars on that. That that would be sort of your core your your core fan base um, is probably willing to do that, and and probably willing to like your your true fans are will be willing to fund you sort of regardless of the methodology you choose. I just think that. Uh, for for the smaller investments, there's a lot less friction uh, in NFTs, and they also it's different seeing like you know ten thousand of some random token in your wallet versus mm -hmm. you know five pictures that you can sort of identify with. Uh, it's just a very different sort of emotional feel uh, to to the investing. But uh, but I, I wonder if we would make these these sort of micro shares. I understand with the Reg CF, you would normally have a very you know low price kind of penny stock like format, but maybe when you're supporting a film, you don't do that. You you Kind of marketed as a fact that hey we're, we're doing it just just like miguel's you know was the first nft uh funding of a film this would be the first reg cf nft funding of a film so people would buy it for the experience of supporting the film not necessarily for the investment and then i think that warrants something being sold for more like a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars and then you do have the picture you do have that single nft in your wallet that you can look at and have their sort of the the collector pride I agree there's ways to do it. I just think that it's, I, I think that, you know, in, so it's so like the reason I brought up like something like Clanosaurs is that the plan is you, you, you build an audience and you build sort of a fan base with NFTs. And then, you know, two years down the line, you go to someone like Apple, Amazon, Disney, uh, Netflix, mm -hmm. and you pitch, you know, a, a TV show or a movie, uh, you know, using the characters. Uh, and, and basically you, you, sh you demonstrate that you've already got, you know, one, product market fit, like there's, you know, the, the NFTs are basically the MVP um, for your, you know, your animation or your sci-fi or whatever, whatever the show is about. And, and then you also show that you, you know, got an audience. So it's not, it, it de-risks the investment for, for Netflix. I think that's the way that you can incubate content. Uh, that, that, at least that with, with the current setup of, of Web3 and the current investor base, mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to, to merge it with media. I think that you know, I, I'm convinced that the, the full financing of, of movies and TV shows will come either through security tokens or just regular tokens or, or NFTs in the next, you know, some amount of time. I just think that that, that market, especially with how interest, like how little interest there is in, in, in the depths of this bear is much, is much more difficult. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that will take more time than actually the more, the more, you know, what you would think of as a more moonshot sort of approach of trying to build the next toy story on the blockchain. I actually think that there's a lot more investors for the next toy story on the blockchain than, than you know, some a, a, a feature film where it's a lot of your existing investor base that you're trying to convert. You're thinking, or, sorry, not your yeah, is, is there, is there a way to, existing people. It's like, yeah, is, is there a way to sort of build investor rails into Beam? Or maybe just like a bi-directional, is, is Miha Torres? Uh, okay. We, we have two ways to do it. Um, so one way, uh, it's 
in the background you can entirely be yeah, you, 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 you're choosing the exact wrong time to have a bad connection and have stuttering DeFi audio by connection with uh by, by tokenized yeah, buddy, you gotta get a you gotta get to a better connection. It's a simple, it's a, Gordon. It's a simple oh, solution. I'm sorry. Uh, Gordon. Okay, I'm, I'm passing it to Tony. Tony, go ahead. Uh, so can, I, can I propose a simple solution. I propose a simple solution for Mihai. He creates a, a beam token that's pegged to USD, and um, and and people can just fund it with the beam tokens, right? I could I could I could I could fund Miguel's second phase of uh, Carita by just in, just buying. Buying beam tokens that that you know I buy beam tokens for the for the creation or post production or whatever of the Carita sequel. Am I am I back for you guys? I think so. You're back. You are back. I, mm -hmm. I just I just gave me no no Tony, no no I got uh -huh. I got it I got it I, I I I could hear you. So I agree with you. That's one way. The second way is that but if if we you, we do what you say. It goes against our principles, which is that you become dep dependent on our token, and that's not what yeah. we want, right? Yeah, want except, except, free... except remember I said my remember I said your token would be would be a, a, right. a, exactly. a stable coin. Yeah, but yeah, but I get so, you. So guys, yeah, just real other... fast, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring Brit in because Brit uh, has a great question. Brit, I'm going to make you allow you to talk for a second. Okay. Um, uh, uh, do you, hear, do, you hear, do you hear me? This is, hey, Brett. We hear you. Hey, yeah, I'm from Austin, Texas. And uh, first thing I want to say, I want to I do own bullish on Beam. Um, Mihai, uh, you met my sons. We did an event with you at Cannes uh, a couple of years ago with Born in oh. Denver, Cuneiform. Um, yeah, we, yes. we did a movie on, yeah, we did a movie on, or in the process of doing a movie on uh, East Denver, right? <laughs> and it's kind of... right kind of you know the woodstock of crypto right and so um and so um miguel all the things you're saying you're right on i mean all the experiences we've been through over the last two years dude you're right on this conversation is incredible and so a couple of things i just want to say a couple of a couple of things i do agree with corey about this whole thing of funding so what we did we decided we decided to go on with Cuneiform to, to create a series or a franchise called the, the Cat Lawyer. Uh, and I, I don't want to get into all that while we did it, but but he's right. I mean, in a lot of ways to get funding to build this NFT world, Web3 world that we're learning. <clears throat> and so the other thing we did, we started another company called um, Monster Fan Club, uh, .net. And what we're doing, we're going after the NIL world here in America of sports, right? College sports, because it's the biggest market we've had Mm -hmm. open up and in, in, in a long time and and you know this following beam and me you know i'm real bullish and there's things that you know things i want to do we're going to want to you know propose bringing to uh to beam but the, the question i, I want to get me on is this neil you know the guy who's taking over youtube right neil mohan if you get into his background and Kind of what he wants to do his you know the the word on the streets that he's on a fast projection of moving everything to web three so i, I just want to know from me how if you heard what you heard from that standpoint what's your thoughts on utah uh, youtube and uh neil uh coming on uh th thank you brit so so good to hear you and born in denver I'm, I'm a huge fan i think we even have our little own avatar avatar of that uh right so my point is uh Companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and Meta, uh, they, there's no possibly any way for them to truly migrate to Web3 because that's completely orthogonal and opposed to their very core of their business. Uh, I mean, Web3 means decentralization, and means connecting the points that they made a rent out of um so they can be saying yeah we're gonna allow you to bring your nfts or we're gonna mint your own nfts here you can't take them away we'll see a lot of big companies even amazon launching their, their digital marketplace in a couple of weeks with nfts mm -hmm. uh but that's gonna be just a, a, a not even half baked it, it will be like a, you know the, the biggest confusion in the space 
there's no way that you can put real real web three through YouTube because what every single creator wants is YouTube's audience, which is centralized with decentralized monetization and direct access to the users, which instantaneously would kill the very business uh, of YouTube and every, everybody else. I mean, to reach your audience, you need to comply to the rules and advertising and so on. Uh, Instagram, uh, no matter if you have uh, 10 or 10 million followers, if you post something, it's going to reach maybe 10, 20% of your followers. If you want to reach 100%, you have to pay. So there's no way that anyone will let you siphon their audience to talk directly to them and even worse to monetize because they are simply dead. So I think the guy is brilliant. Uh, his Web3 past would be good. I'm not sure how good it would be for Web3 because it might pollute very much the message that, uh, you know, the new Web3 is cool, uh, but it's still in the hands of uh, five gatekeepers. So let's see. Yeah, which is interesting. And I, I got one more question and I'll let y'all get back to it. But on that, because the reason that yeah, came up comment. is because we're, yeah, we're, we're dealing with influencers, right? Coming onto our monster fan club or leaving YouTube. Guys that have large followings, right? Because of they own the content, they're getting squeezed out of their deals, right? Or just being dropped, right? And so, so, one of the, you know, so this is kind of turning a little business, a side business, right? That we just didn't anticipate, but now kind of, getting into and understanding, you know, this world, right? What a great opportunity to have for people to kind of make that transition. And I think Beam, you know, taking these people, not for so much from Monster Fan Club, but so much to, to transfer this over to a company like Beam, where we could really do something with these type of uh, people. So definitely that way out. Hey, Britt, do me a favor. I, I love this dialogue. If you're inclined to send me a connection request on LinkedIn, Corey, I already sent you one. Um, I just wanted to. I just wanted to jump in. Yeah, but Miguel, go ahead. No, I just wanted to jump in quickly to say hi to to Brit because I'm a huge fan of of Cuniform and your sons, and uh, it's great to to meet you online. Um, I, I I've actually talked to them because uh, I'm planning to do a Western next, so I'd love to visit you guys on, in Texas and 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 you know and get inspiration. Yeah, it's a fun and I think I've. I, 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 th I think I heard that. I think it's something you want to do something like a uh, Western there outside of like Pecos, Texas, right? Location would be Pecos, Texas. Is that the, oh, is that the project? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I'm still very much in the very beginning of, of uh, researching. I just, I, I want to do a trip oh. soon in Texas and see, see what I find. No, that's, good. Yeah, that's good because there's like, we've gotten like three or four requests, right? To do stuff, you know, Westerns and, one of the things that we got a request that makes it you know a little little sense is the first rodeo in Texas was in Pecos, Texas, right? And so there's a lot of things that are going on with Pecos, Texas, where you know, born in Denver talked about it's one of the, where the first Dow, legal Dow is, right? You have the integration of the largest natural gas formation in the world's right there. And so there's mm -hmm. all these things are coming on that we're kind of building the story, right? around stories and, and there's this reason how the cat and all this gets in deal. So we're slowly building it, right? Building and finding the right people, right content uh, to do these things because it's a unique place in the world. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of storytelling to tell, but I think that that Web3, crypto, um, NFTs, avatars, whatever you want to call it, is, 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 is a, a great platform because in the oil industry, right? Is that we have this migration going to you know going on chain right going to uh, using blockchain to help with royalties and things like that. So that integration started. Our you know our state government is being real proactive for mining here. Uh, so so we so we you know we've got activist groups you know you know for DAOs. So there's still a lot of momentum in Texas for that right. And so so I, Miguel, we'd be happy. Anything we could do to help you with that would be great because you're you're thinking right. You that sense is is because those things are starting to be stirred here in the, in America. So especially in Texas. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll... No, Britt, it, was, it was fantastic. Actually, I, I found you. So you got a connection request. But it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I love on the show that you know, like the guests talk to each other and do business. And I I saw that kind of happen, Miguel. I, I think you're off to Texas, Barcelona to Texas. <laughs> it's, it's happening. 
<laughs> folks, well, we're we're actually over time slightly, and I, I, I'm getting notes from um, some of our attendees that they got they got to jump. So I just want to go around and kind of like you know final word on Web three creator economy and film. Just like you know, if you want to pop something, um, I know I'm popping. I want to see if I can support Portion because I, I I like his other films and I want to see Fortitude. I'm a big space fan, but um, I'll, I'll just rotate around. So as I see it, please, I'll ask you with you first. You're like, huh? What? <laughs> Guys, I'm wrapping up the show because we're at an hour and a half and we're going <laughs> to lose some people. Okay. But I want to know if there's any final thoughts on Web3, uh, the new economy, All right, the then, economy. Uh, Torsen, go. I'll go first, Gordon. Then, yeah, sorry. By the way, I was just going on the order of my screen. So, you know, I, I got her in my top left. So I'm a, I'm a methodical kind of guy. It didn't actually even make sense. Torsen, go. So thanks for, for the show. Um, plenty of uh, food, for, uh, food for thought. Um, it's, uh, it's a very familiar territory for me because I've, I've been covering the space for a long time. Um, but speaking of space, so the next film, The Fortitude, is about space. And I'm really trying to get some people with you uh, into orbit uh, on, on my journey. And like I said, put your name onto the moon lander in, in person or um, uh, you know onto the post and stuff like that. I, 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 I do hear Tony's point about, well, if there's a back end, then it's a whole different conversation. Uh, maybe it's not the token quite yet because that is a whole, um, opens a Pandora's box and I, I don't need that much money. And it's, it, you know, it's, I'm late in this process, but maybe for my next project, think about it from the start. So um, thank you. Lots of uh, food for thought and I'll, I'll be in touch. Perfect. Mihai. Um, first of all, um... Uh, I invite everyone to question everything. Uh, <laughs> don't, I mean, check, du double check uh, everything that says Web3. It can be just a sticker, uh, just a label. Uh, look mm -hmm. underneath. Uh, it's dangerous. It's dangerous stuff. So uh, from scams to outright, you know, people who think they're doing the right thing, but it's not. Um, and, 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 you know, platforms who pretend to be uh, decentralized that are the most centralized thing in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, Beam, uh, I invite everyone to, to join, uh, to join the, the, let's say, the creator revolution. I mean, the, you know, become, our motto is the, you know, centered around self-sovereign creators. That, that's what we're fighting for. Um, so join me and 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 get more creators to understand that because it's about their freedom and um if you have uh, good friends in the vc world uh that are smart or good friends that are angels that are really smart uh we have opened a seed round and we're very selective but we want to talk with smart people who can be part of that round so let me know and tonight, you and I are going to the to the Crypto Hunters event, and we're going to hang out, and I'm going to introduce you to as many people like that as possible, because I believe you, and I believe in what you do. That's Appreciate it. Yep. I saw you were going to say, you were saying? Yeah, I was going to say, maybe on the next show, we can have Mihai again, and we can do a workshop on how to raise funds for Beam. There you go. I, I like how you're thinking. Uh, Miguel, please. <clears throat> Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, I don't know what to say as last words for me. Um, What's your next I, project? What's so next film? it's still very early. All I know is there's going to be a Western. Um, hopefully more on that soon. Uh, but as a closing comment, I would just say that um, for me, Film 3 has been a crazy adventure that has changed my whole life in the last year and a half. Um, I, you know, a year and a half ago, I was really struggling to see how I could make my first feature film. And now I'm um, weeks away from finishing it. And um, so, you know, my lifelong dream of making a movie has, um, has been made possible by DJs on the internet buying our NFTs. And that's just crazy to think about. And so I am forever grateful to Web3 and Film3. That's beautiful. And actually, uh, Tony, you're an impromptu addition, but I'd love to get a final thought from you. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I think I think all the panelists pretty much surmised it. I think for me, Gordon, I think um, 
you know, despite the bear market, I think there's a lot of innovation that, that could be happen. I think Torsten mentioned it, you know, uh, yeah, you know, he's at the tail end of, it, of his film. I, I would love Torsten to, to have a conversation with you. I think there's other ideas beyond the, the security and, and for, for content creation. I really mm -hmm. love, I'm bullish on, on, on Beam. I, I think I think we need to push further. And I think that's the only thing that I have is that we need to push forward, um, you know, What's the old adage? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that there is a need for more decentralized content. There's a need, you know, there's there's a need for 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 more more decentralized films, and and I'm 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 just bullish in the whole sector, even despite the bear market. And I know that we kind of sort of focus on NFTs, but the reality is that I've just like the word fidgetal. I've sort of like despite the fact that you know. Um, as Miguel said, you know we're very we're very appreciative of the of the DGENs and the NFT community. Mm -hmm. The fact is that we probably have got grown those those descriptions of NFTs because really anything could be an NFT. It could be security. It could be a token, a membership token. It could be a film ticket, right? And yeah. so I think that we need to probably just jump in and just be as creative as possible and just try to build what we want to build without the the you know the, the the verbiage of oh this is an NFT because it doesn't really it's like it, it, yeah it's an NFT but the NFT is almost like the technology just like when you send an email you don't worry about HTTP and S STMP and all those other protocols mm -hmm. I think we reached that stage where NFTs are the same thing very good um, hey, hi, Gordon. Gordon, do you have a last comment yeah just well Gordon as always thank you for for being a wonderful host and getting such and extremely, ex extremely knowledgeable and insightful people on a show. And thank you all for being here. Frankly, I was a bit afraid that since I'm not really in the film industry, it would be hard for me to like speak to this really, um, you know, famous and artistic people. But uh, it turns out that Web3 unites different industries. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And come to our next, next show and follow our channel and like and share and all that. Exactly. Um, Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe. All right. And I want to thank our guests. Also, you guys were fantastic. Corey, Marco, Britt, fantastic, guys. Really good job. I'm going to stop the recording now. Really appreciate it. Well done.